I'm not going into details here because I want to concentrate on the face up for this video, but I'm working on an in depth video on wig making, which should be ready soon. So today we're finally getting the wig video I promised half a year ago. Let's start with the materials I use, okay? The first one is Mohair, the hair of the Angora goat. This one is from Newmore Barn, a shop in England, which I have ordered many times from. As you can see, it's a bit wavy and very fluffy. I like the soft feel of it. I usually use it for short wigs because it gives a very cute and fluffy style. Long hair wigs usually get a lot of volume and look very poofy, which is okay if that's what you're going for. This mohair is from Luna and Stella Dolls on Instagram and as you can see it is less poofy and more wavy. I really like how silky it is. It works very well for long hairstyles, it gives some really nice waves, but it's also very pretty for short curly looks. Then we have alpaca fiber, as the name says, alpaca hair. It is a straight fiber and also very soft. This one is from Zerga Studio on Etsy and it is a very fine, shiny fiber. So far I've mostly used it for short styles and it can be a bit stiff for that actually. But it looks great with long hair. This one is from Newmore Barn again and as you can hopefully see it seems a bit thicker than the other one. I think it's because the single hairs lump together a bit, but it's also very soft and silky. I prefer this one for short hair, um, but it looks really nice for long hairstyles. The last animal fiber I use and can show to you is Tees Waterlocks, the hair of the Tees Water Sheep, and also bought from Newmore Barn. <laughs> they have a very curly texture and are a bit less soft than the rest. You can use them as they are or brush out for a more voluminous look. I've used them for short and long hairstyles, both brushed out or unchanged. Let's also talk about non-animal fibers. I guess most of you know by now that you can brush out acrylic yarn and get very pretty results from it. It is soft, it is shiny and it's pretty cheap. <laughs> Since there are a bunch of great tutorials out there which explain it all in depth and probably better than me, I won't go into that topic. Just know that I have used this a lot and will go on using it in the future. <laughs> Other non-animal fibers you can use are plant-based fibers like ramy, bamboo or in this case soy. It's a whitish fiber that is very soft and very shiny. It feels a bit like an in-between of yarn and alpaca. The best of two worlds you could say. <laughs> it's also on the cheaper side of the spectrum. And you can dye it with fabric dye. So. On to the next step. First, let's make the wig cap. This Dolzone Neveu will be our model for that. Since she has fantasy ears that are a bit difficult to work around, I replaced them with two magnets to stand in for the ears. Apologies for the video material from here on. I'm still trying to figure out how to record this the best way, um, since I usually just hold the doll between my knees and then work like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> You need cling foil to protect the doll, a thin stretchy fabric, elastic bands and glue. Preferably a waterproof one, but I usually use this one because I'm smart. <laughs> it dries quickly and a bit elastic. So, <laughs> First of all, get the cling foil to cover the head and the doll with. Unless you like to live your life dangerously like me, then you just cover the head and shoulders. <laughs> Then you grab your fabric, in my case some nylon stockings, and put it over the head. Wrap the rubber band around the neck and then over the ears like I do here. Right, 
Like this, you get the fabric to lie down as closely to the head as possible and it will be a great fit in the end. Pull the fabric tightly so there are no or almost no folds. Then just grab your glue and cover the whole thing with it. Make sure to spread it evenly and thinly. You can use a brush, but I prefer a silicone tool because once the glue is dry I can just peel it off the silicone. And I usually do two or three layers, which gives you a nice thin and elastic wig cap. Once it's dry, I draw in the shape of the wig cap. I usually make it go a bit around the ears for a better fit. Then free the head and cut it out. I always leave the cling foil attached to it while working because like this it will still sit closely on the head while protecting the doll from glue. I pull the foil back just enough to cut the wig cap. Perfect fit! <laughs> now to the weft making. What you can see here is one of my very first wefts. Yes, I still have some leftovers from my third wig or so. <laughs> and as you can also see, it is very thick. This is the most common mistake I see in many videos and also tutorials, which will often result in very poofy looking wigs. This is one of my more recent wefts and as you can see it is way thinner and more see-through. It will allow you to make a nicely layered wig without looking like a helmet. You will need a sheet of plastic or foil, your fiber of choice, some glue. I use an all-purpose glue which is waterproof and dries quickly but in the end doesn't really matter. <laughs> a silicone tool that makes it easier to squeeze the fibers into the glue and a comb. Separate a small section of your fiber, brush out the end a bit and cut off the uneven parts. Now put down a thin line of glue right next to the fibers and then spread it with the tool or brush. Work as neatly as possible, you want a clean thin line. And then repeat until you have a nice amount of weft. The amount you need varies depending on the size of the head, obviously. Um, I usually start with three sheets of wefts and then see how much more I need from here. Peel off the wefts and be very careful while doing that because the glue is very thin. And then cut down the glue line. I keep mine at around 3 to 5 millimeters. When you're done with that, you'll have a nice stack of wefts 
and we can now go over to gluing them onto the wig cap. New setup, new doll! <laughs> and a bunch of curly short hair teeth water locks. Get your doll a sturdy place to sit, or do it like me and hold it firmly between your knees, since that's how I usually work. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier, to be honest. And then start gluing the wefts. I usually do one or two rows where I just glue them around the edge for a nice finished look. I use the same glue I use for the wefts because it dries very quickly. When the two rows have dried, I start cutting. If I'm working with curly fibers, I wet them. It helps against getting frizzy. Then I use a scalpel to cut the hair. You can also use an eyebrow razor. I usually don't use scissors because it tends to look too blunt in the end and with a razor blade you get a nice layered look. But be careful not to cut yourself. Those things are sharp. <laughs> This is what it looks like when cut. I then proceed to glue rows of web, but only on the back of the head, until it has reached the ears. I cut every one or two rows. And then it looks like this. I now go in half circles again, like a U-shape, leaving out the front for now, until the doll has hair like a medieval monk. And this is where we are now. After that, I glue wefts from the front until I reach the back. Like this, we will get a sort of parting line that won't be visible from the front. And I usually use this technique for short hairstyles. I think it gives a nice look. But since you can barely see what I'm doing here, let's change setup and doll another time. So, now you can see. We have the exact same setup here, the U-shaped monk hair. And we will now go and glue on the wefts from the front to the back. Make sure to cover the glue lines on the side and also glue the wefts very close so there won't be any gaps. That's why it is so important to make them super thin. <laughs> And now we've come full circle. <laughs> the gaps are closed and now you take one thick weft and glue it onto the others. And once it's dry, you can flip it over to hide the glue. I usually do that with the help of water and a curling iron to tame it with heat, but be very careful. If it's too hot, it can affect the glue. And as you can see, getting the hair to lie down can be a real pain. <laughs> But with water and heat, I've managed every time so far. <laughs> if you want to see his face-up progress, I'll link the video in the info card. Also, for the classic middle parting, instead of doing the U-shape, you just glue wefts to each side of the head until they meet in the middle. Then you glue one weft on each side in the opposite direction, or in my case, two, since they were too thin. And fold them over. Done! I'm still not sure whether I should have redone the whole thing, because let's be honest, the quality isn't really great. But I know it would probably take me another six months or so, and I just wanted to get it done already. So... Thanks for watching, I hope it was useful to some extent at least. Maybe I'll redo it anyways. <laughs> See you next time, bye!